There is only one nation that can be as strong as Oirat, and that's Atomons. If you wonder why is Oirat so strong, first, it has great position, it can expand in any direction, it also has extremely good ideas, and of course, of course, it can easily beat Min right at the start, yes, even without big army. And of course, it has the best karma reform in the whole game. Well, let's start. Grant a larger tribal host. You need more manpower. As for Mongolia, it starts unloyal and you need to make it loyal. How to do it? You can either develop its province twice or you can placate local rulers once. Here it is, let's placate. And now Mongolia is loyal. It's quite important to make it loyal because otherwise someone may support its independence. As your rivals choose Chakatai and Uzbek, most likely they will hate you. Forget about allies, I doubt anyone big would agree to ally you. Well, maybe Manchurian traps, but I wouldn't say that they are very helpful. So, how to beat Min extremely early? Well, first you need to move your army somewhere here to Eastern Mongolia. You can assign your general, this one, he's extremely good. And now what you want to do is you want to take one loan and let's take a look at our mercenaries. You don't have much manpower, so you need to use mercenaries. So, I recommend to hire one free company and someone with good siege. I see only this company, it might be good. Two siege pips is always good. Sometimes you can even see three siege pips here. Don't worry about loans, I really recommend not to chip out on mercenaries. You need good siege. It will really help you. If you don't, it might be a lot more difficult to win against Min. Also start improving relations with Mongolia and build spy network on Min. I think we can already declare, you can declare earlier of course, but I prefer to declare when my troops are here. Obviously refuse offer to become Min's tributary. Let's wait for a few more days and I think let's declare. Okay, let's go. Take Mandate of Heaven. It's important, not with tribal conquest, not reconquest, mandate of heaven. Now it's very important how to win. Min does have more troops and they're quite powerful. But first you have uh, your traditions. Your cavalry is quite strong. Second, your general is extremely good. And Min's generals are quite bad. And also, don't forget that your heart, you have bonus on flat terrain. So open simple terrain map and try to find flat terrain like steppes, desert, grasslands, farmlands. Fight there, don't fight on Mountains or highlands, just don't. Let's slow down a little and meet Min. Most likely it will arrive here to this province. And don't forget to set Mongolia to either supportive or defensive, because otherwise it will kill its troops. AI is not the smartest. I would allow attach on my free company and set Mongolia as supportive. It will attach to my troops. It won't do anything stupid. Don't doom stack like me, but keep your troops nearby. And here it is, Min. In this game it entered here in Western Mongolia, but in my previous tries it usually entered around these provinces. So you don't want to let them unite, you want to kill them while they're not together. Don't let them doom stack. Like for example here attacking would be a bad idea. You need to find this general, the Emperor of Min, and you need to beat this stack in battle. In theory I can win this battle, but I don't want to. It will take too much of arm and power. I will wait until Min disperses so I can kill individual stacks and not their whole army. But I need to keep an eye on this stack with their kin. Ok, here it is, as you can see, half of Min army is here and half of its army is here. They won't be able to defend their emperor in time. And here it is, the capture of the Min emperor. Well, first I want you to note that they lost twice as many troops. Second, I want to note that its general is a leader of Min. Well, it was leader of Min. Right now, it's not. So you need to try to find a leader of Min, the emperor of China. If you do, you will get this wonderful event, which will reduce Min's mandate by 20, and you will get extremely good bonuses until your ruler dies. But don't fight this tax yet. What you want to do is you want to get to Beijing through these points, and you want your mercenaries to siege Beijing. Not your army, but your mercenaries. And here it is. When you capture Beijing, you will occupy whole North China, and Min's mandate will just plummet. What does it mean? It means that their armies now are paper, and you've got a lot of combat buffs. So you can right now go and kill these stacks and unseach any provinces that Min has sieged down. I've unseached most of my provinces, I put my 2k stack to unseach any other province and I will start sieging down Chinese provinces. Don't forget to shift console date before battles, it will increase quality of your army, like this. Oh, here we go, stack wipe. After you occupy Beijing, means armies are paper. You shouldn't fear Chinese, you should fear rebels. They are not difficult to deal with, but there are a lot of them and they train your manpower like crazy. So it would be good if you could finish the war before they spawn. And don't forget that Emperor of China can stand devastation, because you occupy 
while Pacific half of China, devastation will increase and the mandate will go down, as you can see. As you can see, it's already quite low. This will cripple Min for good. They won't recover from this war. So, what do you want to take from Min? Ideally, ideally, you want to kind of protect Min from others like this. Also, you will be able to border any Chinese revolters if they appear, like for example, Dali or Yue, and you will get gold mine. This province is gold mine to help you with your economy. Okay, let's pass out. You will have tons of money, just tons of money. You should embrace feudalism right now. What I suggest to do right now is to return to your homeland and start raising. Raising is very, very important. Because of raising, you will get tons of mana. Basically, quarry will be free. Or not free, but extremely cheap. Okay, I've raised everything. Let's wait for one month. Here it is, less than 100 over extension. That's why raising is good. Cheaper course, and you can reduce the overextension. After your armies have returned, you need to either declare on Korchin, preferably, or if it's too strong, as strong allies at no, declare on either Karadel or Sarika gear. Only if they are tributaries of Min, of course. If they're not, don't. You must call in Min into this war. So let's, for example, declare on Korchin, reconquest, let's wait for a little bit, and I can piss out day one. Yes, I can. That's because it just ruined Min and it doesn't feel like fighting. So, we can just piss out, and now our truce will be like 10 years shorter. Yes, it's now only 5 years. It's a very good technique if you want to quickly conquer China. Now we can declare in 5 years, not in 15. Anyway, anyway, uh, let's conquer Cochin. Most likely you will have uh, the best mill tech in whole Asia, because we've just raised entire China. Yes, we do, we even have better mill tech than Korea. And don't be like me, don't siege with your whole army. Siege with the minimum amount possible, because you don't have manpower. Okay, let's pass off Cochin, return course, and now we will border Manchuria. That means we will be able to conquer it. Maybe not now, because soon our truce with Min ends, but in the near future, yes. Don't forget to raise your new provinces, raising is always good. And now you can conquer some Manchurian nation, if there is good opportunity, or you can just chill, until you can declare on Min. And that's why I recommend to make this border. As you can see, into Chinese already declared. Don't be afraid of this event, most likely it will happen. Your ruler is just too old. And yes, you will lose these bonuses. And here it is, the truce has ended, but first I want to start next in Mongolia. Start next in Mongolia as soon as possible. It's very important because you're very very big and you need to start annexing it earlier than later. Also, to not have bad religious unity, you might want to see your decisions, yellow shamanism, and choose Mahayana as your syncretic faith. Choose syncretic faith, Mahayana. Well, here it is, now it's okay. And on 11th November 1454, you want to, to click on Mongolia, Influence, Annex. And now let's declare on Min. As you can see, it's just destroyed. Take Mandate of Heaven for cheap provinces, and let's go. Always take Mandate of Heaven just because it grants you cheap provinces. And by the way, eventually, Min will start to collapse. You will see this event. Second war shouldn't be that difficult. And now China will collapse. As your second reform, choose this one. Martial Society. What do you want in the second war? In the second war, you want to border these states, so I will take points here so I can border Hujian. That's because Amin will collapse and new nations will appear here. And of course, we will conquer them. You might also want to take Mongolian provinces, these ones, and some Beijing trade node provinces. And of course money. You need Mongolian provinces for your missions. Well, it seems I accidentally gave them to our vessel, not a big deal. As usual, don't forget to raise your new provinces. So now, what you want to do is once again declare on Min's tributary. Well, it seems Min won't even support this one. Let's see. Well, I guess Min is already too broken. Well, if it does support, just declare white piece Min, the truth is shorter. After the Min, I suggest to quickly conquer whole Manchuria. Again, Manchuria, not Central Asia, because Central Asia is usually a lot more difficult to conquer. Let's look at this. Okay, let's declare on Haishi, make a Chonyu co-belligerent. Let's also declare on Chibe and make Janjo co-belligerent. So here it is, Shan has broken off. If you see this Chinese revolter state, declare immediately, before they cut any allies. There will also be two new nations in South China and Dali, and maybe Taiwan. Let's just wait peace over Chonyu for now, I won't be able to conquer anything. Let's also peace out Shan and Haishi. As a faculty group, I would recommend to actually take Tukmatic ideas, if you want to play efficiently. But but if you want to make the game more fun and not about efficiency, I recommend to take Humanist, just because Rebels will kill all of your fun. But yeah, it's better to take the magic first. And I would recommend to develop Renaissance somewhere here, in North China. And don't make trade companies. When you form Yuan, your capital will be moved to China and they will go away. I think I will develop Renaissance here, why not? Development Edict and let's develop. Also, to speed up the annexation of Mongolia, get Magic Reputation Advisor. Let's pull Annex Shiba. 
So in this case it's not possible to follow an exchange show, so what I will do is I will isolate it from Korea so it can conquer it and I will conquer it in the next war. So there will be a coalition but we may ignore it because we will conquer everyone who will join. And now let's declare on Solon, Colin Nivk. And here they are, new Chinese nations, let's get CP on them and let's declare. Declare on them immediately because they do get allies. You might think that it's not easy to wage that many wars at the same time but it's a hard life, it's actually quite easy. Rebels are the most difficult here. It also seems Chakata right now is extremely weak, like extremely, no allies at all. Yes, we already have 3 wars, but that's the hard life for you, you are constantly at war. I will declare because I'm sorry it's just too good of opportunity, if you see these opportunities, grab them. And also by the way, you will need to declare on Chakatai anyway to form Yuan, you need some provinces from it. So let's declare, and I think for this I would hire some company, for company, because I can't spare any troops, they're already busy. And that's why I said that humanist is not the best, but it's best for quality of life. Just imagine fighting rebels in addition to these wars. It would be hell. And by the way, Taiwan is here. Okay, let's start Nif and so on. If you raise, you won't have any problems with mana, so you can conquer as much as you want. I would of course declare on Rachoni, but it's a light to mean, and our truce with mean should soon end. So I won't right now because I want to declare on mean as soon as possible. But if you can conquer whole Manchuria as soon as possible, because well, it's very easy to conquer and it grants you more manpower, more land, more taxes, more men after all. It seems Dali has broken away and of course I will declare. Well, it's a little bit overwhelming to manage, but it's not difficult. Okay, let's just piss out you, eh? All I can get 100 war score, but it's just too tedious. Waging war against four nations is not difficult, it's just quite tedious. Winning battles and sieging is extremely easy, but well, I also will need to soon declare on Min and to do something against rebels. It's not easy. And by the way, two new Chinese states have appeared and ideally I should declare, but well, I'm just too busy. Also Miao has appeared. Well, as you can see, it's not difficult to win against Chinese warlords. It just requires some concentration. And China has collapsed. Well, to be honest, I think I would need to take a break either way, because I need to cross some provinces. I don't want over 100 over extension. Let's also South Dali. Can you see this? And that's why I prefer to declare on those nations ASAP, because they can actually ally Korea. Without Korea, you can just put your armies on automatic siege and win. It's not really difficult. But if Korea gets involved, then it's another story. It actually has quite advanced tech, and it's very difficult to siege down, because it has mountains here. Well, right now I'm extremely overextended, so I can't really declare on anyone else, but if you can, it's a good idea. So, of course, some of my provinces. Let's first start Chakotai. From Chakotai, take provinces necessary to form your own, and you may make my little. Well, here I would take Tibet just to get access to Tibetan nations and to India. Don't forget to raise, raising is very important. So I can declare on Min, but I think it will be a lot easier and more sensible to declare on Chinese warlords. Well, as you can see, they don't have much army, they don't have good mill tech, and it's better to do it before they like Korea. Just make sure that you've cored all provinces that these nations have cores on. So for example, here all the UI provinces are cored, I don't have anything to fear, but if you haven't, they won't progress Korean. And yes, I do have over 100 over extension, but to be honest, it's not that bad if it's not for long. You just need to deal with it quickly. Also, by the way, quite important, don't forget to delete unnecessary forts. Well, you will have tons of money because you can just take them from Chinese miners, but it's better for your economy to be at least semi-functional. To keep your economy afloat, you most likely will need to steal money from your neighbors. Oirat doesn't have good economy. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's pass out Wu, I will take money and some provinces. Let's also pass out Xi, and of course you will get coalition. But there is one trick, it's called truce. If you have truce with all of these nations here in East Asia, they won't enter the coalition. So the strat here is to constantly declare on all of them and eventually conquer them, and they won't be able to enter coalition. Let's also declare on Yi. As your first H ability, either take this one, or if you see some good vessel that you can steal, you can take transfer subject. Well, Yar can cut next, and I can't see anyone else, so I will take aggressive expansion. Mongolia is finally integrated, and that means you can finish few more missions. Well, if you've taken necessary provinces in the peace deal. Night Mongols. Here I think the first option is better. I think it's better. And here I recommend to choose the second option. Tangri is very good. So I think fully annexing Lian in this case is better than taking money. Well, because it won't be able to ally anyone, it won't enter the coalition, and well, it will just make my life easier. That depends, of course. Some nations you can't fully annex in one war, then just take money. There is no sense in taking 100% provinces. We can upgrade to the Empire, by the way. Let's do it. Also, I can fully annex Gen Show, and I think I should. It's not ally to anyone, which is good. Let's also episode E. And I think it's good time to declare on Min, finally. 
with take method of heaven. Well, it's actually up to RNG, sometimes it's easier to conquer min before these smaller warlords. But before declaring on min, I think it's a good idea to wait until we core our provinces, Chinese provinces, because then our coring will stop and it will be quite painful to deal with our extension. I've cored my Chinese provinces and I think we can declare on min. Let me call Chinko Bligerant. Declare with take method of heaven and let's go. I will also declare on Nanai right now, so it doesn't become a cheap tree and I will piss out our Chinese. Okay, let's piss out. Don't forget to take money. Taking money is essential and how did it happen? We are at war yet it's my trip tree. I can also piss out this nation. I think I will also declare on UA and break loose alliances. Because declaring on war right now would be a suicide, just look at this. It's allied with half of East Asia. Okay, let's piss out Min. Don't forget to take money. Just make sure you can annex Min in the next war. So I think I have an idea. I will take two provinces, break its alliances. And now I will declare on Xi. Well, not now, but soon. And reset our troops. Okay, let's also piss out UA. And because I have truces with Chinese and Uzbek is quite busy, I think it's a very good idea to fight it right now. Let's spell Chakatai, I will just take money. We are still poor after all. I will wait a little bit for Moscow to piss out Uzbek and we can piss out. A second idea group, I will take the Pomagic. You need the Pomagic for this idea. Province war score cost. As I've said, it's more efficient to take it as first idea, but let's be honest, it's a lot more fun to take humans idea as first. Otherwise, dealing with rebels will be painful. Okay, let's just piss out. 100 war score will take long time. From Uzbek, you just want border with Transoxiana and Muscovy. Next, you should try to conquer Kiva and Rin. So, your next targets are Transoxiana and either Nagai or Muscovy. It seems Wu has stolen the mandate. Well, nothing has changed. I just won't declare on Xi right now. I will wait for our truce with Wu to end. In the meantime, I think I can conquer Tibetans. Why not? It won't take much resources. As far as the reform, take this one, Uniform Mongolians. It seems Xi is no longer allied to Wu anymore, so I will declare. Beating Korea is quite difficult because always has good multac and it has good terrain. Like for example, if I try to siege this fort, it will most likely kill me. Well, we can try, it just might be not successful. Well, it was successful, relatively. But we've lost a lot of troops, so be careful with Korea. I will just break its lines with Wu, and that's it. Fighting Korea is always quite difficult. Okay, let's fully annex Xi, and our truce with Wu has ended. Let's take Mandate of Heaven. And I think I will also conquer Min, just to unite whole China. Min is no more, and now uh, let's deal with Wu. And uh, let's piss out Wu. So, as you might have noticed, I haven't taken Mandate. And you might ask why. Well, that's because if you take Mandate, you will stop being a horde. But being the Emperor of China as Warat, it's very boring and it's not even really cool. Horde is just a lot more powerful. Of course, if you want to become a monarchy, Emperor of China, take Mandate of Heaven. But in my opinion, it's not really useful. Instead, what you can do is just to destroy the Emperor of China, to fully annex it. So, for example, Wu is Emperor of China here, that means I need to fully annex it. After we fully annex it, there will be no mandate, it will be gone, and we can form Yuan, without mandate. Take new ideas, Yuan ideas are very good, even better than Oirat. Well, what to do now? Now you want to rush this mission, defeat the Rus. I don't know why Ottomans have got so many land here, but usually they don't. Why do you want this mission? Because it will give you province over score cost. So basically we need to conquer some part of Transoxiana, some part of Nogai and, well, get to Kiev. I would recommend to focus on it because the reward for this mission is just very good. You can do snakes like this. It also works. Also I would recommend to deal with Korea earlier than later because Korea becomes stronger the more you ignore it. It already has a 9th mil tech and I have 8. Also it might be a very good idea uh, to convert to Hindu religion, to rush to India. Hindu is very good religion for world conquest. So let me simplify this strategy. First, a win against Min, declare tributary of Min, shut down the truce, declare a second time, always get money, it will help your economy. While Min collapses, you can try to conquer Manchuria, it's usually quite easy. Or maybe Chagatai and Uzbek, if they're quite weak. Also possible. Then uh, try to rush, killing those Chinese miners, and you will be able to form Yuan eventually. It's very, very easy, I didn't try to overcomplicate things, I didn't try to uh, form Mongol Empire or something like this. Most of the time I had like a 90 hour extension, 80 hour extension, but less than 100. Even right now I can just race and it will be less than 100. If you really want to, you can conquer faster. A lot faster. You can basically form Mongol Empire by this time. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day.